Hello! In this video, I will teach you how to solve optimization problems using MATLAB. So, what you can see over here are two examples of optimization problems. The first problem is a least squares problem, and the second problem is a nonlinear optimization problem with constraints. I will show you how to write MATLAB functions that can be used to solve these problems. So you can see uh, basically 35 lines of code that are used to solve this complex optimization problem. It, se it seems trivial. In addition to this video, I have created a post that describes all the steps you need to take to solve optimization problems in MATLAB. A link to this post is given in description below. And here you can see this post with all the codes and all the explanations. Let us now briefly explain the basic idea of optimization solvers. So what you can see over here is a simple quadratic function. Say that we want to minimize this function with respect to x. So we want to find a minimum j of x with respect to x. Obviously the solution is equal to 5. So this is your solution. Now we are humans, right? And we know from basic mathematics, we know how to optimize this Scos function. We set, we compute the first derivative, we set the first derivative to 0 and from there we find uh, the minimum or maximum, right? of the function, well, computers are dumb. They only tell us what we ask them to do, right? So we need to tell to computer, we need to define a procedure that will approximate this solution. Now, here is how your cost function looks like. It's a basically parabola due to the fact that this function is uh, convex and we will have a unique minimum in this case it will be equal to 5. Now to our solver we are specifying basically an initial guess of the solution. So let this initial guess be denoted by x0 and here is our x0. So we can say x0 is equal to 10. And our solver should produce the value of x that approximates the exact minimum. For example, if your solver is efficient and uh, if it's a good solver, you might get, for example, 5.000 many zeros one. So you will have a point very close to the point five, to the true minimum. Now, inside of this solver, basically we have a, some numerical procedure, an algorithm that generates a sequence of points. And eventually this sequence should converge to X star. Basic, the basic idea is to compute the next x1. For example, starting from x0, you want to compute the next point x1 such that the cost function at point x1 has a smaller value than the cost function value at x0. So you want, ideally, you want to produce a sequence of points. Let's say this be basically, I cannot sketch it here. So this is x2, etc. You want to produce, so for example, this point is x2 or 1, 0, 1, 2. For example, this point is x3, j of x3, etc. So you want to produce a sequence of points that will converge to the exact minimum that will basically go down 
the cost function. This is a simplification, right? This is a simplification. Cost functions rarely look like this. They might look like somehow like this, right? And you might end up, if you start from here, you might end up in a local minimum, which is not necessarily your global minimum. So for example, this is your global minimum of the cost function. So this is your cost function. This is your global minimum. But depending on your initial guess, you might end up in a local minimum. So your solver is basically an algorithm that generates a sequence of points that ideally should come to your local or global minimum. To solve an optimization problem using MATLAB, we first need to define a function that describes the problem. So let this function be called minimize. So this function is going to accept initial guess of the solution. Since we are dealing with nonlinear optimization problems, we need to have an initial guess since nonlinear optimization methods are iterative methods and we need to provide parameters. In this case the parameters are going to be for example they can be uh, the coefficients of the cost function or some other parameters. Then we need to define the constraints. If our optimization problem has a constraint for example we can say that x1 is between 0 and 1 and we will define the constraints here and some other solver parameters that I'm going to explain later. Then we need to call the solver. In our case we are going to use the MATLAB solver called f min f min constraint f min con f min constraint. So that's the function. So you can type in MATLAB window help f min constraint to get more information about this solver. Then we are going to call the solver with a handle, with a handle, with a function handle describing the cost function. So we are going to describe inside of this minimize function another function called cost function and this function is going to return the value of the cost function. So here is our cost function and this is going to be its value and we're going to provide a handle to the solver in our case to f min constraint. So let us start with a simple optimization problem. Equation number one describes a least squares cost function where y1 are let's say measurements, a11 are known coefficients and x1 and x2 are optimization variables. The optimization problem has the form given in the equation 2. So we want to minimize with respect to x1 and x2 the cost function j. Some of you might ask why do I start with the least squares problem and with least squares method? Well, a least squares method is a fundamental method used in a number of engineering and physics disciplines. For example, this method is used to fit the parameters of a model using experimental data. As an example, here is a video describing a project of tuning the parameters of a distance sensor, that is, in this video, I'm explaining how to use the least squares method to calibrate a distance sensor. Since this is a least squares problem and the cost function is quadratic, we can find an analytical solution to this problem. So taking the first derivative with, the, with respect to optimization variables x1 and x2, and by performing a few mathematical steps, we can compute the solution given by equation 7. Basically, the idea is to write uh, this system in a matrix form, to write equation 3 in a matrix form, and to solve such a system under the assumption that the matrix A, T, A transpose A is invertible. And here is our analytical solution. We will use this analytical solution to compare the solution obtained using 
the MATLAB approach with the exact solution represented by equation 7. So let us now define the function that describes the problem. So here is our function, minimize cost function. This function will accept the coefficient matrix A that you can see over here. It will accept the parameter Y, that is the vector consisting of the elements Y1 and Y2. Here's a vector y1 and y2, and here is our original cost function. And the third parameter that this function is going to accept is x0. x0 is an initial guess of the solution. The next step is to define the constraints. In our case, we are considering an unconstrained problem, so all the constraints will be empty matrices or vector. And here you can see a basic form of the optimization problem that MATLAB uh, considers. So you can see you have a cost function minimized with respect to x subject to these constraints and the constraints are given here. Then the next step is to define the solver parameters. As I mentioned previously, we are going to use the solver f min constraint. We are going to set the algorithm to be interior point, you can also use interior point, SQP, active set, and thrust region reflective. These are other options. Uh, and then we are going to specify some other parameters. For example, we are not going to use the gradient of a cost function. This parameter here, display, uh, means that we are going to, um, during uh, optimization, we are going to plot the, or monitor the progress. So we are going to plot the cost function in every iteration. Then we constrain the maximum number of evaluations. We use uh, parallel processing since uh, computers right now have multi-cores. And we set the optimality tolerance and step tolerance. So these are the solver parameters. Then here's the function. We use this function to call the fmin constraint solver. And here is our function handle. So this function cost function x is defining our function that can be seen over here. So here is our function. Now, I've wrote this function basically in a vector form. The vector form of this uh, function has the following form. So if you have y1, you have y2, and this is your a11, a 1, 2, A2, 1, A2, 2, X1, X2. If you take two norm of this term, so this will be your A matrix, this will be your X, and this will be your Y, you will obtain basically a scalar cost function. Two plus then you have y2 minus a21 minus a21 multiplying x1 minus a22 multiplying x2 square and this function is actually equal to the function that you can see over here this is our least squares function now once we have this analytic form we can just define the cost function x that gives as its return value the value of the cost function. So we just specify vector y, coefficient matrix x, uh, coefficient matrix a and x when you compute the two norm of this difference. Notice that this is a vector when you compute a two norm, it's a scalar, and this function returns the value of j. Notice here that this function can access the arguments of the function minimize cost function since they are in its global scope. This is a trick for accessing basically variables or setting variables that cannot be defined in this local function. And 
Another step is basically to save this function. Once we have defined such a function, we need to save it in a separate folder. So we just click on save as, we call it minimize cost function, we click on save. It's very important to call this function using the same name to the name that you use to define in the file. Now, another important step is to tell to MATLAB that this function is stored in a specific folder. So by clicking on here, set path and add with subfolders, we're going to add the folder. Here is our function. Our function is actually defined in this folder. We're going to click on select folder and I'm going to click on close. So now MATLAB knows when we, for example, from another script, call this function, MATLAB will know where this function is stored and stored and it will call it will call the correct version of this. Once we have defined and saved the minimized cost function, we write another script. So in this script, we are going to define an arbitrary coefficient matrix. In our case, we are going to use 10 by 10 coefficient matrix. Notice that here I used only 2 by 2 coefficient matrix A, or only four parameters of a cost function. So to make the problem more interesting, I'm going to consider uh, a 10 by 10 A coefficient matrix, and I'm going to consider uh, the Y vector um, having 10 rows. So this is our basically problem definition. We are solving minimize, basically we're solving this problem, minimize y minus ax, only this function now has 10, is 10 by 10, this is 10 by 1, this is basically 10 by 1 here, and here we are having a vector 10 by 1. We specify uh, these basically variables as random vectors. So these are random vector matrices. So A is a random matrix and Y is a random vector. And we need to specify initial guess for the solution. Again, we choose a random initial guess. And here is the main part. So we're calling now the minimize cost function. We set A y and x0 as its arguments by executing this function we are going to obtain the solution and you can see it over here how the solution will be cal calculated notice that now uh, it's a bit slow since I'm calling the uh, parallel solver and here is the progress here is the progress Here's how our optimizer is performing. I specified probably tight tolerances, so it's going to take a while for us to compute this solution. Although previously, in my previous version, this was only basically five seconds or something like that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to uh, stop the solver and I'm just going to relax these tolerances since these tolerances are unnecessary small. So and then I'm going to uh, generate it again and hopefully, yes, now it's much faster. So here is our progress. This is the value of the cost function. This is the iteration count and these are some optimality tolerances. Here is our final solution. So here is the solution, right? Once we have this solution, we would be, uh, it would be very interesting to compare this solution with the exact solution. That is with the, with the solution obtained using the least squares method. That is with this solution over here. And this is done over here. We are computing the exact solution. So here is our exact solution and here is our computed solution. Or if we want to basically compare these two vectors, we can just basically uh, either plot them like this or uh, we can do something like this. Okay, so we're going to correct that. So 
So here it is. You can see that uh, entries are quite similar, almost the same. Uh, so we can just uh, subtract these two vectors. So what happens if we do something like this? So here is uh, the residual. However, we can also compare the computed solu the solution with the exact solution using the two norms. So we are going to compute it relative to norm, and we can see that the error is in the order of 10 to the minus 8. Okay, so we can solve a simple least squares problem using a <laughs> complex method. However, this has been done just for demonstration. Of course, you will never in practice uh, use f <laughs> min constraint to solve a simple least squares problem, since you know it's an analytical solution. However, I use this only to demonstrate the basic idea. Okay, let us now try to solve a more complex problem. So you can see over here, equation eight, a more complex optimization problem. We are trying to minimize basically two norm of this vector, 10 minus x1 sinus x2, etc. quite a nonlinear uh, vector, actually a vector containing nonlinear functions. So we are minimizing its two norm or something that looks like this, right? If we compute the two norm of, of the vector, and we have constraints now. We have constraints. We have constraints. So how, how are we going to solve such a problem? Well, we are going to use the same strategy. Right now, I'm just uh, going to paste the function I wrote. Uh, and I'm going to paste it instead of the function minimize cost function. Okay, let me try to do that. So here is thing okay and I'm going to save it right and then in this script I'm just going to copy and paste something I wrote before okay so let us briefly comment upon this function so here is our function so what are the modification modifications so what you can see here, we are having lower and upper bounds. So we are going to incorporate these lower and upper bounds that you can see over here, right? These are the lower and upper bounds. You're just going to simply incorporate them in the vector LB and UB. And you can see over here that we are specifying LB and UB constraint vectors. So once when we call the f min constraint function, you're going to specify lower and upper bounds. Similarly, if you have some other type of uh, constraints that you can see over here, you can specify them. You can specify them easily. You can also have a nonlinear function, a nonlinear constraint. In that case, you would define another function that will return the value of nonlinear constraints, and you will, of course, provide here a handle to this function. Good. So everything uh, more or less stays the same. Now we need to code the cost function. So here is our cost function. And here's how I coded the cost function. So these are the values. So for example, you're writing 10 minus x of one. So here is 10 minus x of one sinus. And here is the third term, 23 minus x one square minus x two minus x three. Uh, and simple as that. In this case, x is three by one factor. Again, you save this function, you add it to the MATLAB path, and then from another script, you define basically initial solution. Here is our initial solution, initial guess, actually. Notice that here, the minimize cost function takes only a single arg argument. Okay, you can modify this to take the coefficients of this co cost function. It takes a single arguments, and again, we are calling cost function you're actually calling the solver over here. Here is the solution progress. And here's what we get. Here's our solution. Here's our solution. In this case, we don't know the exact value of the solution. However, we can check, we can check our optimization procedure by basically computing the value of the cost function for initial point. So we substitute here x0 guess, right? And here, I've done this, I computed x0 guess, and I can compute just the norm, 
just the norm I can compute the value of this cost function and here it is here is the value of the cost function so this is our initial we start from here this value of the cost function and then once I have the solution here is our solution vector solution 1 solution two solution three etc right we can compute the final value of the cost function so here is our fi final value of the cost function actually I don't need a square here since I'm computing the norm and I just compute the norm and here it is so we start from 10,000 or 11,000 we end up at 30 means we are optimizing our solution is basically optimizing the problem Okay, so I have created a post with all the codes. You can find all the codes uh, are posted online. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, subscribe if you like. Subscribe to this uh, channel if you like these videos, and have a nice day.